We're fishing with Captain Jot Owens. He's a lifelong Carolinian that fishes right here in the Wilmington area. Sometimes we're fishing with him in the past. You've seen us out there in Wrightsville Beach, but today we're fishing the Cape Fear River with him and we're targeting striped bass. John and I met years ago on the boat show circuit. Uh, we both worked for Ranger Boats back in those days, and I could tell immediately when consumers would come into the booth, because I was more of the traveling pro and he was the regional pro, that he could articulate all what was necessary for them to actually buy the boat, which was rare for a fishing guide or even a professional fisherman. He really went to great lengths to learn everything about the boat, the, the way it was made, um, the warranty, uh, everything, and, and how he set his boat up, and it gave the, the customer a lot of confidence, and I thought right then, Jot Owens is the guy that's gonna be in this business for a very long time. Here we go. Oh, that's him. That's a striper. Here we go. Big enough for a net? No. No. They pull good either way, though. Yeah. He hit that thing good and hard. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. That's a better than I thought it was, actually. <laughs> net, net? Yeah, let's just be on the safe side. We'll get, a good, get a good shot on this fish here. Just be on the safe side. Oh, yeah. Nice little strip. <laughs> nice. Nice. Well done. Very nice. Very nice fish. All right. Good looking fish, man. Healthy, very healthy we, fish. We did a show, I'm gonna say probably two years ago, two seasons ago in Alabama with uh, one of my friends, Graham Taylor, and we just caught some of these whopper sized fish, but we weren't catching them on artificials, we were catching them on gizzard shad. Oh yeah, the big, yeah, the big dog. Big, big ass. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good looking fish. Healthy, healthy fish. You know, we nicknamed them there, we nicknamed them zebra snook. Zebra snook, <laughs> they pull so daggone good, huh? They yeah, pull so fish. good, that's a gorgeous looking fish. Yeah. yeah. So see, I'd call this a medium fish. Yeah. You know, we, we, I've caught them up to 30 pounds in this river, Whew. but 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 not very often. You know? Yeah. I mean, three in my life, three that, in my life over 30. Um, this fish is, you know, probably 25, maybe 26 inches long, but this is your average medium fish. This is your fun fish. You know, on light tackle, it's that's a great battle. They pull great. They I mean, pull they're, great. they're really great pulling fish yeah. for their size. They are. They yeah. really are. Well, well let's well, throw them back and yeah, uh, put that one back in the a, drink and find us another one. And here. let's go do that a couple more times. We didn't come out here in this cold weather for nothing. Absolutely. I live in Florida, and even though I live more in north central Florida, where we're above the frost line and it gets pretty cool, when we got up to Wilmington, it was remarkably cold and jot had had very comfortable weather the week before we were there now all of a sudden we're faced with this frigid you know i'm going to the polar express if you will cold front that comes in and just kind of frosts over the boat every morning and just really just chills that water down by like 10 degrees and we really didn't know what to expect so striper fishing around Wilmington, it's a definitely a year-round fishery, um, but I like to do it in the wintertime because I feel like the fishing gets a little better in the wintertime because the fish get concentrated down river. Um, the fish kind of spread out during the summertime and you catch them literally all over the place. But in the wintertime, they come down river and concentrate lower, closer to Wilmington and the creeks and channels down there. And when that water temperature starts to flirt with the low 60s, mid to low 60s, those fish start to really pour down there. And by the time it gets to the upper 50s, most of the fish that are gonna be there are in that area. Um, and that usually translates to around December. Um, sometime in December, it, it's pretty good in November as well, but December is when it gets the best. And that's when I'll change over from fishing down at Wrightsville in the saltwater area and start doing the brackish water fishing for the stripers and the Cape Fear. Got him? There yep. you go. There you go. Thank you for catching him, CA. <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, he hammered it. He hammered it. He yeah. hammered it. I had a good bite a minute ago. I just missed him. <laughs> nice try. That's the right species. Ooh, nice fish, CA. Got a nice head. I've got a stick. I've got a stick. Beautiful. Oh, and look at that. That's why you keep the line tight. That Every is why time. you keep the line tight. Bounces out right there. Right there, yep. This fish has got some, uh, got some shoulders, got some belly. It's, it, it's a wide body. Yeah, it's a wide body. Not yeah. a long fish, but it's a wide body fish. And uh, I'm gonna, this is a great moment to mention something to everybody. A lot of people don't know this is a big misconception with stripers. The striper has a lot of broken lines. It's yes. not a hybrid. Real stripers can have broken lines and do have broken lines. Yeah, uh, you see it a little bit more in farm race fish. Yeah. And a lot of these fish are stocked. Yeah. Um, but this is a true striper. Uh, it just has broken lines. And a lot of people don't know that, but you can have broken lines in a, in a natural, in a normal striper, a straight, in a straight species. That's black and gold. Yeah, I mean, you tie that one, on, it looked good. One, sw one switch and it, it turned it on. Boom. And he hammered it hard. Ooh. Nice. Very nice. I could, felt like it got electrocuted. Very nice, beautiful fish. Yeah, it is. They got a broom tail. Yeah, yeah, they do. They, they're, they're made for power. They are they, made they, for you know, power. Yeah. They're fun to catch, especially in this current. That's it. That's it. That's it. One thing I would say that impressed me a lot, and I did have a little bit of experience with striper fishing because over the years I've had a few chances to catch some, some freshwater stripers, is the power that they possess for their nominal size. Now I know striper get to be this big, but we're talking about those four, three and a half, four, all the way up to six pound striper. And they fight an awful lot like a like a big snook. They've got that big tail, uh, big knuckle on it. It's, they're really strong and they're aggressive. And it is a no doubt strike. It's not like a tap. It's like a, you might get bumped once and then they clobber it, but they're hammering it. I mean, it was, it was pretty impressive. And on the type of tackle that we were throwing, I felt like they put up one hell of a fight. There it is. There it is, okay. Get out of your way. Okay, I see you now. Okay. Gotcha. You get the net. Looks like a red. And it is. It's a, you want to grab him or scoop him? It's a decent size. Yeah, it's a good red. Yeah, let me up. It's a good red fish. I want to get the net just in case. Sir. I mean, that's a big bait. Dang right. And oh. I mean, he choked it. He choked it. That's awesome. It's good to see. Little, little bonus fish there. Wow. Nice. Beautiful. I mean, nice spots, chunk. Color. Chunk of a red. We'll pull him up on the front there. Yeah, absolutely. Whew. Beautiful fish, CA. Eh? Beautiful fish. That thing, I mean, clobbered it. Man, he did. I thought for sure we had a striper there, my friend. Yeah, he, uh, he had no... No problem with uh, with that uh, with that. That's uh, a five. That that's a five-inch swim bait. God, and it's gone. And I, yeah. There we go. He choked it. He did. He had that thing. He choked it. That's he a good size swim bait. Yeah, I mean it. it, that, it is. that is a, That is not a little lure. And uh, he hammered it. Look Beautiful. at the look at just the depth of that fish. He's such a healthy, healthy Beautiful fish. color. Gorgeous got the, fish. Got the copper and the a little bit of teal there around the eye. And you guys call them puppy drum. You yeah. don't really call them redfish yeah. like we do down yeah. in, in in the deep, deep south there. You guys call them puppy drum. We're, and we're getting, we're hearing more redfish swing. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> That's time okay. goes on. <laughs> well, it also wouldn't be a show if we didn't catch a redfish. Sometimes I think back over all the seasons that we have fished um, on Flats Class Television and 18 seasons in, and it's rare. I mean, I'm gonna say probably, even when we're targeting stuff that has nothing to do with redfish, except for bass, uh, we end up catching redfish. And lo and behold, we caught a few in this episode too. Got him. Striper or redfish? Might be redfish. <laughs> 
Yep, yep, little red fish. It's a little red fish. Yep. It's a little red fish. And he hammered it like a dang striper, buddy. Tell you what, he's got one heck of an attitude to be able to take a bait that big. Man, he did. He 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 lipped that thing like a chum. He rammed it with his mouth and got him hooked right up under the jaw. Buried it in the bottom. He did, yeah. Buried it in the bottom. He's a little chilly feeling too. Yeah, I bet he is. <laughs> he's a little chilly feeling I too. Bet, I bet he feels like he's an ice box fish. Pretty little fish. Beautiful a little fish bit. stick. Well, you did say we'd have a few opportunities to catch not only some drum, but, you know, puppy drum, but flounder, stripers, everything up here in the river. Yeah, it's uh, the water temperatures are kind of right on the verge of these fish start heading down river. But I thought here in the little, little bit shallow water, if we had a chance, this is where we'd see one. And hey, one turned up. He, he bit pretty hard for his size. Sure did. <laughs> he almost had me fooled for a striper. <laughs> But anyway, good to see healthy fish, beautiful colors in, this, in these, these river fish, a little darker than our, our ocean yeah, fish. You can see it in their fins. Yeah, beautiful fish indeed. <laughs> there he goes. Awesome. Let's get another one. Let's do it. Got it. My Gosh, damn it. Got him. Got him. He hit it twice, thank God. Good fish. Get out fish. of your way. Yep. Hit it twice. I <laughs> thought I missed him on the first hit. Slow gear hit ratio it. here. <laughs> it's a good fish. Feels like. I'm gonna get the I'm gonna get the net. Yeah, yeah. Let me tell you. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Oh, you guys are gonna nice love one. this one. Whoa. <laughs> That is a good one. That one looks like it's got a tag. It did. Somebody already called him and cut it off. Hey, 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 look at there. Look at there. Oh my goodness. Look what's in his mouth. Oh my gosh. These striped bass feed like Jack Cravel do. It's like they're not ever going to get filled up. In fact, one of the striped bass that Jot caught had about a six or seven inch mullet in its in its maw in its craw it was like head first tail sticking out of his mouth and he still hit a big five inch z-man hercules minnow i mean it was it's impressive when you see fish that are that aggressive in those type of conditions high barometer blue skies chilly water and still whacking baits like that that's that's some good stuff so that was a tagged fish that was a tagged fish you yeah, could, somebody you else could see cut the off. tag right there yep somebody else cut it off that's the second time he's been caught. Yep. Third. Third. Good to be tagged. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Let's get him back in the water. Let's get him back in the water. I want to keep doing this. Yeah, I this mean, is fun. These are fun fish. We're getting a little better. Yeah, man, it's getting better. So like ideal conditions for these stripers in the Cape Fear River are going to be Water temperature for me is going to be anywhere from 60 to 50 degrees. Um, it can be in the 40s and you'll catch them, but I like it to be in the 50s. Um, less rain, less wind, clear waters. The water's already pretty brown, but get that sweet tea clear look. That's the best. And then you, you put on top of that um, a good tide flow. And it could be rising, it could be falling, but find breaks or seams in that tide line uh, or on those tides, and you're going to find those fish, creek mouse. Um, drop-offs along the river, reed grass lines where you know that there's going to be a couple steps of drop-off. As long as you have that current, icing on the cake, you're going to see some bait up there, you're going to see some mullet jump in, and then that's going to kind of full circle to what you're looking for. It's kind of cool to see the mullet in his mouth. Gosh dang, yeah, man. I mean, that's a lot of, <laughs> that's a lot of mullet. That's awesome to see, that just tells you can't, you really can't throw too big. Got him. Right here. Right there, man. Right there, <laughs> man. He whacked it. He whacked it that right there. That was awesome. Uh, <laughs> that yeah. was about to pull that lure out of the water. Oh, do we get the trolling motor? Oh, oh, get the trolling oh, motor. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that little Hercules and that Houdini color has been money. It has been. Just that size, that five inch size. Yeah. It's a lot of bait right for five there. inches. Yeah, and it's and it's heavy, but it's a it's it's a good bait. It's a good bait and it gets the job done. It's, it's catch it's caught fish of various sizes too. I mean, we threw a little bit of the black and gold with the, with that same five inch herc did good. We've been throwing the mulletron. It's been doing well. 
I mean, reds from 18 inches to to two foot. Two foot. Yeah. 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 It's been catching fish. It's oh, biting me. <laughs> Let go, dude. Woo! <laughs> So for this, this fishery, we throw bigger baits, five and six inch baits. Um, and I like that so the stripers can find them. But you will catch other species up here. Uh, we see redfish quite a bit, sometimes some flounder, every once in a while, maybe even a speckled trout. And it's interesting to see those fish, a little bit smaller mouse, eat those bigger baits. Um, you do get some swing and misses. This can be a 50-50 uh, catch sometimes where you might have 20 bites and only catch 10 fish. Um, because you're throwing those big baits, but those big baits do draw out the bites. Got him. That fish was, was shallow. That was tight. Yep, that fish was really tight. I mean, it's like you just threw it in there. No, it's the oh, it's, it's a, a fish. baby redfish. Hit a five inch. I think so. Hercules? Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> That's why I hit it because it's a redfish. I mean, he hit that thing immediately. Oh no. Mr. Flounder. Mr. Flounder. Mr. Flounder. Yep, look at that. He's barely hooked. <laughs> I would have never oh, guessed. Man. I would have never guessed. Oh, you never know what you're going to see in December in North Carolina. Well, in the you've, river. Already, you've already got a winter slam. Uh, I swear. You got a grand slam if you get a speckled trout. Trout, I swear. <laughs> in the net, in the net, in the net. It's hard to believe that you can throw a five inch bait like that. Yeah, and he actually hooked better than I thought he was. I could have lifted him, but I, I, I saw so much hook because the hook's so big. I didn't think he was hooked that good. Got a little bit wrapped up in the net here, but I think we can get it out of there pretty quickly. Yeah, that's there a, we go. Yeah, no, look, look at that's that. That's a real look hook. Look at that. Look, think he had that? Yeah, he had it. He wasn't getting off. Ooh. Well, uh, it doesn't happen all the time, but in in this particular episode, uh, Jot just stirred up that magic that he always conjures up and he ended up getting what we would call the cape fear river slam where he got a speckled trout he got a flounder he caught a redfish and he caught striped bass caught four of those fish and to do that in the same day just does not happen especially when you consider basically throwing the same lure all day it wasn't like we changed things up that much in this episode pretty much fished with these big swim baits and for him to stay with a swim bait that would accomplish or tease into biting and sighting strikes from all four species that was pretty amazing well our trip to Wilmington North Carolina was just fantastic uh, it's just one of those pretty little southern towns where the fishing's good the food's good and the company that we were hanging out with the Owens both Jot Sr. and Jot Jot Jr. there, or who Jot Sr. calls Little Jot. <laughs> it was an amazing trip and we enjoyed it and we can't wait to get back there sometime soon. So fishing with Captain Jot, um, before I made my move up there to Wilmington, he told me to bring some larger swim baits that could hold down in some depth and some current for us to go strike bass fishing. Now, he on the hand, on one hand always uses uh, a heavier jig head in that 3 8 to half ounce size with a big five inch tail, sometimes four inch, sometimes six inch, but five inch tail is what he told me. So I decided to bring the Mullitron line through, the LT version, and the five inch Hercules baits. These two baits, when I use them here in Florida, especially for snook, larger redfish, sometimes the big jacks, they do a fantastic job, even tarpon. But to throw a lure of that size in that type of water and current and be able to get a good hook set, because you're talking about some heavier gauge wire hooks on these baits, you're going to need a stick. So this is a seven foot six. This is a Fitzgerald Aquafin. I've got it paired up with a 4000 Shimano Twin Power XG. This is a seven and a half foot rod. It's medium heavy. 
Uh, it throws everything well between a quarter and three quarter. This lure right here weighs five eighths, so it's right there in the sweet spot. I've got this uh, spooled up with 15 pound diamond moss green fishing braid, and I've got a section of about four feet of 30 pound leader. Now, on the rod that I was swinging all day long, I've got this Stunner HD. This is another Fitzgerald rod to throw these big mullet LT, these six inch baits. Now, this is a, a heavy action rod and it, it really throws these types of baits well because you need a heavier power to throw that big six inch bait. Uh, it has a faster taper on this particular rod. I've got 30 pound braid and I've got 40 pound leader on here, about three feet of it. And it just does a fantastic job, whether I'm fishing for striped bass in Wilmington or I'm fishing for the big snook here uh, on Florida's nature coast. But I've got that paired up with a, this is a Tranks 150 HG. This is the, uh, if I remember right, this is a 6.3 gear ratio. So it was easy to remain to have that slow, steady cadence on the retrieve and keep this thing at a maximum depth to catch fish. If you employ some of the techniques and tactics that we used with Captain Jot, you too will be successful on the Cape Fear River catching striped bass next winter. Ha <laughs> ha!